Hello, everyone, and welcome to Collider Nightmares. I am your host, Clark Wolf. We are so happy to see you today. Thank you for joining us for our third live show ever. Woohoo! Very excited. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and introduce our panel. To my left is Miss Perry Nemiroff. Hi, guys. Happy Hanra Day! Hanra! Yeah, Hanra. I'm so excited Hanra. to be here, as always. It's going to be a good show. <laughs> Thank you so much. And to her left is Mr. John Schnepp. Man, we are going to be talking about so much Hanra. I can't even begin to list off the Hanra we're going to be talking about. <laughs> I'm so excited. I drove over here in my Hanra. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> my Hanra vehicle. Uh, and to my right is Mr. Mark Riley. Oh, guys, so excited to talk about Hanra. And also, congratulations on finding the seven new habitable planets that are out there. Oh, my God. I'd like That's to say right. hello to our future alien overlords. If you need help, let me know. I'm here for you. 40 million light years to Earth is a brand new horror movie that just got written today. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So are they going to be like xenomorph, like alien aliens, or are we getting like, I don't know, uh, those fat Independence little Day. fat chunklets from Doctor Who that just eat you? I yeah, think I it's, like it. I think it's that our, do our doppelgangers from the, the other planet, and they're going to come here and find us and eat us. Oh my God, That's I love what that. I think is and happen. that just wrote <laughs> itself. Yes. In I'll, fact, I'm writing that now. You're welcome, Eating. Hollywood. I'll you're go welcome. for the arrival species then. Oh. And, oh. It's, and never mind, I was going to say spoiler. Not no doing spoilers. It. <laughs> Hanra. 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 New Hanra. I love it. All right, let's go ahead and dive into our fresh meat. Fresh. Squishy, squishy. Squish. Fresh. All right, so this one I think is super exciting. The Hollywood Reporter is saying that Evil Dead, Spider-Man, and Drag Me to Hell director Sam Raimi is in talks to bring one of three Bermuda Triangle films to the big screen. Here's what you need to know. The film is being produced by Skydance Media and is being kept tight under wraps. Universal and Warner Brothers are also developing Bermuda Triangle triangle movies and Oz the Great and Powerful was Raimi's last directorial effort. Um, so I, you know, I was reading about this and they were saying that the script is being so protected that even potential directors had to drive to the studio in order to read it. So, but Thank I think you. what we're seeing is that, you know, for Sam Raimi to actually step into the director's chair because he's been doing a lot of producing lately, um, that, that it's got to be something great. And uh, I am, any, any excuse for Sam Raimi me to get back into sh horror and something scary I'm down with but what do you guys think are you excited about this how could you not be excited about this mm -hmm. I, I really don't think that's possible Sam Raimi is one of my favorite directors out there you attach him to a project I'm going to be intrigued instantly and we kind of do need a Bermuda Triangle movie. I don't necessarily we need one. think. Yes, we do need I one. I don't think we need three of them. However, on Movie Talk, I pointed out, wouldn't it be cool if the studios kind of just pushed financial differences aside and box office competition, and each one of them took a different approach to crazy stuff happening in the Bermuda Triangle, and it turned out to be one big shared cinematic you universe? One big triangle? Like, well, <laughs> no, like so someone's like aliens, and someone's like natural disasters, and everyone had a different reason for why things go crazy a shared there. shared universe? It would never happen, but it's an idea. I'm all for Sam Raimi. <laughs> Gentlemen? Well, yeah. You know, one of them's going to suck. One of them's going to just be okay. And one of them's going to be awesome. It's like the bear with the porridge. So. <laughs> the bear with the porridge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or I think Bermuda Triangle's yes, just right. right. Sam Raimi's yes. porridge just is like just the bear. perfect. The Goldilocks so, yeah. zones. We learned That's about that I, on Movie Talk. I want to see Bermuda Triangle, you know, like the 70s style Bermuda Triangle, but done now. Or, this, or the scenario is going to be the best Bermuda Triangle movie comes out first, and then the other two just disappear Here's, in the Bermuda Triangle. Right. I don't want it to look too slick. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, I think, because I, I, I picture this in my head, and I kind of get ghost ship vibes. Like, oh, a cruise ship, and mm -hmm. then scary stuff. And then, I don't want that. I want, like, I don't know what I want, but I want it to kind of be, like, down and dirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. And I mean, you wonder with Sam Raimi, what kind of version of a Bermuda Triangle movie we're going to get. Are we going to get the slick, kind of natural disaster kind of movie right. or something like bonkers that he can do, you know, pull in some Evil Dead flavor in right. there? Uh, but it, it's so hard to speculate because we don't know what the story is. Well, you're just like, saying huh? that made me want to see Cabin on the Water. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's yeah. like you're on a little boat. And that's where, you know, all the craziness is happening. So you're basically in a, a cabin in the woods, but it's on the water. So. That'd be cool. Yeah. And then it travels into lost territory. Totally. I don't know, like finding new islands or portals. I don't know. See, I don't I don't necessarily want portals, 
but I like aliens. I'm big on the Bermuda Triangle lore, so mm-hmm. this, like, I want Sam Raimi, like, off the leash. Just Man, I'm going to write a fourth Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Screw it. Sorry. You're going to break the triangle? Yeah, yeah. I'm break breaking that triangle. I'm breaking but, it. Now, I just, just, to, just throwing it out there, because obviously we love Sam Raimi for his crazy, his crazy Evil Dead style mm-hmm. and, uh, and dragging me to hell and things like that, but... He's directed some straight horror movies too, mm-hmm. like The Gift, for instance. Not mm-hmm. Joel Edgerton's The Gift, but The Gift with Kate Blanchett. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I just revisited that movie recently, and I still love it. But that's more of a small town, tense thriller. Um, so I, I, yeah, I wonder which Sam Raimi we're going to get. Didn't he do a Simple Plan as well? Oh, yeah. Which yeah. is also he kind did. of a tense, yep. a psychological horror film, if you want to think about it. People right. betraying each other over money. My, my fear is that this is a big Hollywood version of Bermuda Triangle, where it could be a little watered down, maybe not like, I don't know, like fun, twisty plot points and whatnot. It's just going to be like, oh, there's like, again, so hard to speculate. Aliens or- the coolest thing about Sam Raimi in particular is that he's done so many different genres of movies and he's done so many different movies on different scales. I mean, who really knows what he can do? In this situation, I wouldn't mind seeing it somewhat like a Drag Me to Hell type movie where it definitely had his style and flavor to it, but at the same time, it did have a mass appeal where I could recommend that movie to just about anyone, and I know that they would like it. I hope that pirate skeletons come up and start dancing from the ocean. (laughs) Yeah, doing the evil (laughs) dead, like, I'm back! Yeah, Yeah. exactly. All right, we could could speculate on this for for days, but let's go ahead and move on. So, you guys, uh, we've had a really exciting last couple of weeks here on Nightmares. We've had special guests, we've had interviews, we've had all kinds of things, and so, some of our time hasn't been dedicated to the trailers that have been coming out, and boy, as we move out of the January and February months of the year, which I know sounds silly, but we know what that means for most movies that come out during that time. Now we're starting to get into some really exciting stuff. So the rest of our fresh meat is going to be dedicated to some trailers. And first up is The Void, an 80s throwback that premiered last fall at Fantastic Fest, finally has a trailer and will be released in theaters on March 31st and on VOD on April 24th. So here's what you need to know. The Void features a lot of gooey practical effects effects and bloody disgusting called it quote among the greatest body horror films of all time so they really liked the void Mm -hmm. uh it was written and directed by jeremy gillespie and steven kodzinski and it has been said to pay homage to the thing and assault on precinct 13 and um some of you have even been tweeting at us about it including grant who is at aka mk songbird on twitter and he says this teaser for the void is insanity and it is insanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I did not see this one at Fantastic Fest last year. Um, I had been hearing mixed things when I was at the festival. However, in researching and looking up some reviews before we started rolling today, there have been many positive reviews uh, for this movie. And I, I'm i certainly curious. Schnepp, I know you're super jazzed on this one. Super excited about this. I first heard about this when they were running their Indiegogo uh thing about a couple two years ago to to raise money to do these practical effects so it's really independent filmmakers making a horror movie and i lost track of it because it was indiegogo and i remember coming back and i missed my opportunity to pitch in so i was bummed out about it but i'll be pitching in by being a paying customer i cannot wait to see this i thought the trailer was fantastic i totally got those vibes it almost like felt like a jodorowsky meets uh, the thing on, in Assault on Precinct, you know, 15 or whatever. There's all those <laughs> elements to it. And, you know, there's those quick shots of, like, bizarre, liquidy, special effects, tentacle-ridden, bizarre horror, you know. I think it looks fantastic. And I'm 100% in. I hope it's amazing. Fingers crossed. I do, too, guys. I think it looks fantastic, and I'm not surprised because one of those co-directors, he has a history of working in art departments, and the other guy has a history in special effects makeup. So it does make sense that one of the most striking things about this teaser are the visuals. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're incredible. You look at the, this one shot here we have. It's gorgeous. I mean, you you release this still. There's no doubt it's going to get some attention and catch eyes. And it part of me is very excited about the idea of one horror movie that mashes up so many familiar scenarios you know you have the the cop rescuing the man then you have 
have uh, the idea of a night shift uh, staff in a hospital being stuck in there. You have the cult-like figures, mm -hmm. um, the idea of people inside turning ravenously insane, mm -hmm. and then the gateway to immense evil. You have essentially taken almost every horror staple and smashed it together. Very, very ambitious, which has me intrigued. However, you know, based on this trailer alone, it's hard to guess whether or not they really can bring this all together. So I am skeptical, but there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to see this. But this trailer did exactly what trailers need to do. This got me excited. This is like if there's an award for best horror trailer <laughs> of the week, I'm giving it to The Void. Yeah. This is it's amazing awesome for trailer. me. Just the vis it's the visuals that I got. Yeah, I see the flavor of the thing and the assault in Precinct 13, but I'm seeing just batshit stuff that I can't even wrap my head around. I'm like, you've, you've completely thrown away like, yeah, I see nods and I see like horror movies that I love, but this is standing for me on its own in a bit because I'm like, wow, what am I watching here? What, what's with the cult? What's with these guys in the, in the hoods waiting outside? I don't know what's going on, but I can't wait. I dig it. Yeah, stylistically, I'm I'm totally on board. I definitely want to see it. And the fact that it's getting a, a small theatrical release right. is, is very exciting. I feel like this is going to be a movie that is worth seeing in the theater. Clark, mm -hmm. you should talk to those people at A24 and see if we can do a Collider Nightmare oh special screening gosh. for y'all sweaty horror nerds. Oh, boy. You know what? The Void, it could also be part of the Bermuda Triangle. They got the triangle <laughs> in there. Yo, Similar you know, logos. Like, yeah. I think you're right, actually. Uh, okay, so from one to another, let's go ahead and keep going. Uh, and you guys really wanted us to talk about this one. I was surprised you wanted us to talk about this one because there's so little to talk about, but we're going to do it. So here we go. A few weeks back, A24 released the teaser for It Comes at Night, starring Joel Edgerton. Here's what you need to know. It was written and directed by Trey Edward Schultz. Uh, plot details are light, but when Edgerton joined the cast, Deadline reported that he would play a father who would stop at nothing to protect his wife and son from a malevolent, mysterious presence terrorizing them right outside their doorstep. A24 has brought you genre fair or hanra fair like The Witch, yeah. Ex Machina, <laughs> Green Room, Under the Skin, and Tusk. And finally, It Comes at Night will hit theaters in the U.S. on June 29th, 2017. This is a great little teaser. It's it's a great teaser for sure. And look, I mean, sign me up for the Joel Edgerton fan club. Yeah. I, will, I will see what anything he's in. And um, But you know, it's I'm so surprised that you guys um, were so into this because it really reminded me of The Witch in a way of, of pacing and tone. Um, I haven't seen the film and I don't know anyone who has, but but I think that especially that this is coming from A24 and we're getting such a, a, a stark um, teaser that really reveals very little, yeah. I think you should expect something like The Witch and not necessarily like The Strangers, right? right. Oh, absolutely. This is the point in the show when I deeply regret not seeing the director's first film, uh -huh. which is widely beloved and if that, if the reception to that movie means anything for this, we're going to get another great one out of him. And in A24, I trust, especially with horror films lately, they really are just snatching up such high quality, different things. Yes, they have that slower pace to it. And this trailer is the way to sell something like that. It's just that idea of, even though we don't get much plot information here, that idea of using that one tracking shot down the hallway mm -hmm. with the void, it, mm -hmm. it just sucks you in, in a way that that's gonna, that's gonna be more engaging than anything else you could do at this point. So I think that was the smart play here. And that cast, I mean, Joel Edgerton, Riley Keough, Christopher Abbott. Christopher Abbott deserves some more credit because he's so widely known just for his work on Girls, I think, at this point. He's done a lot of really incredible Is independent films. On Girls? He's, um, oh my God, now his name is escaping me. He he was dating Allison Williams' character. Oh, never And then mind. they broke up, and then he started the company. Oh, it's going to bother oh, me. Yeah. I, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Oh, now I lost my train of thought because I can't stop trying to think of his, his name. His name is Stumbles. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Well, so you were saying though, you were saying that he should be more widely known because he in addition be more to widely girls. known, and then uh, Carmen Dejogo too, who's going to be in Alien Covenant, and there's no doubt in my mind we're going to start hearing her name more often too. So this seems like the proper package to want to go see now. What was the film now. that uh, Schultz directed beforehand? Um, Krisha, I think it's called. 
K R I K R I S H A, and it's got a ninety-seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yep, and that was what led him to get his a two-picture deal with A twenty-four. Where can we see Krisha? I I don't know. (laughs) I don't know, but it's on my to-do list for this weekend, without a doubt. (laughs) Krisha, that's not it. Um, I can't wait to see this. The trailer looks great. I could watch that, you know, slowly walking towards a giant red painted door forever. Uh, intercut with people's faces and stumbling in the dirt and stuff. Yeah, you know what? I, it's a great trailer. I don't know what it's about. I have no idea. O- only Joel Edgerton said, "Say that again, and I'll kill you." Or there's something going on at the dinner table that's not really sitting well with him. I don't know what it's about. I want to see. It. We want to watch it that's unfold. Right. Riley, how about you? What do you think of this trailer? Yeah, the trailer's great. Um, I'm going to be saying it a lot of it on this show, but a lot of these trailers just visually get they they know the balance they're trying to create. So it's uh, it's a comment on who's marketing these and and who's putting them out there. But for me, the big takeaway is A24. I see mm-hmm. this is the thing now with A24. I see that more than Joel Ed- Edgerton. I see A24 and I go, yep, Green Room, The Witch. Sign me up. Mm-hmm. I don't care what. The, don't show me anything more now. I like I'll take the creepy long passageway and a red door as yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. So I can walk in as as blind as possible because it seems like what A24 is doing is that there's not necessarily huge twists, but there are just are things that are so inherent in the movie and the storytelling process that you are surprised just the way it ends. The Witch was a perfect example for me, how surprising that was for me. So I wanna be I wanna be surprised with this as well. For the record, his name is Charlie on Girls. Yes. And just to throw out information that you might actually care about beyond that, Go check him out in Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, which is better than you might think it is. I There's wouldn't. I don't know about I that. Like, I liked that movie <laughs> yeah, a lot more than I one. ever thought I would. It was definitely a movie. Jay, James White, he's great in a most violent year. And there's also another movie called All That I Am that he's excellent in also. Wonderful. We love you, Charlie on Girls. Okay. And uh, so let's get to the next one. Finally, a trailer for Sean Burns' latest The Devil's mm-hmm. Candy in theaters and on VOD on Friday, March 17th. And uh, so we they just released this awesome poster. I mean, just feast your eyes on this weird beauty. I'm mm. obsessed with this poster. Um, okay, so here's what you need to know. It's being released by IFC Midnight and stars Ethan Embry, Sherry Appleby, and Kiara Glasgow. Uh, Die Hard Metal... Oh, so here's the plot synopsis. Die Hard Metalhead and struggling artist Jesse moves with his wife and daughter to a middle-of-nowhere Texas town, unaware that the new house they got for an unbelievable deal comes <laughs> with a grisly history. The soundtrack includes Metallica, Slayer, Pantera, and an original score by Doom Rock legend Sun O. Nice. Yeah. It's right, that, Hell yes. <laughs> that was my impression of some of the music. <laughs> um, so Perry and I have seen this movie. Uh, uh, we've been talking about it for a while. You know, we it, the the release has been sort of up in the air for a while, and uh, we're currently talking to Ethan Embry about coming on Nightmares. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. So I stay like tuned. Uh, but um, but no, this is a really cool movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, now Perry, I wanted to ask you about the trailer. Did you feel like this trailer was a good representation of the film? Yes and. No, yeah, it's hard. Too. It's hard not to be a little disappointed in the trailer just because I have seen the movie and I know so many little special, unique things that it does. This trailer doesn't really. I wouldn't say it starts from the beginning of the story. It doesn't really set up his Ethan Embry's character in the movie in the way that I knew him totally. and why I loved him so much. However, it's also one of those movies that. You know, you hear that premise and you think, oh, like you get a house for a good deal. Oh, I know what's going to happen. But you really don't. And Sean Byrne has such like a unique touch to his Mm -hmm. approach to that familiar scenario. There really is no way to kind of bring that together in uh, however many seconds trailer this is. So I think they probably sold it as best they could without spoiling anything. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. I also was surprised how much emphasis, emphasis, was put on. <laughs> on I'm just kidding. Uh, was put on uh, this uh, serial killer or the killer that we see, yeah. you know, in the trailer. I was surprised at how much he was like front and center because keep in mind when I saw this film, um, I walked in completely blind. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know because I saw it at a festival. And um, I would just say that this paints a picture that I don't know 
if that's what the journey necessarily is. It's a bad. I love this trailer. I for sure love this trailer. And to be fair, I saw this movie two years ago, so I don't. You know, I, I can't remember, wait but, to see it again. Yeah, I know, right, uh, guys? What about you? I mean, fresh eyes. What are your thoughts? I, I love uh, Pruitt Taylor Vince, a guy yes. who plays a googly-eyed kind of yep. weird, creepy mm. dude playing the metal and walking around in a garbage bag. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the movie. You know. I don't know what it's about. Obviously, there's a serial killer. There's a kidnapping. There's a guy running around with a shirt off. There's a, <laughs> images of uh, crosses disappearing. Mm -hmm. Satan could possibly be involved. And there's a lot of heavy metal music. I'm totally fucking seeing this. So, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, the trailer completely sold me. Whenever it comes out, I'm there. <clears throat> March. This March, it'll be out uh, from IFC Midnight. Riley? I'm totally fucking seeing this, too, man. <laughs> totally. You guys are so well, metal then. today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look. We're, we're just going for it, aren't we? <laughs> Metallica and Slayer. And yeah, Italy. come on. Yeah. Uh, this looks great to me. What you said over the parry about, like, the trailer underselling, maybe not underselling, but you're surprised by seeing this trailer. Good. Like, I'm glad that there's some nuances that's missing because you seeing it, you're going to have a totally different take. For me, I'm looking at this thing. And that poster that they released, isn't that the type of, like, VHS cover that yes. you, like, pick yeah. up in your local, like, blockbuster? Rip. Um, <laughs> how I would look at this poster or this VHS cover and go... I'm taking yeah, this, this and I'm, 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 I'm renting this. this tonight. And your package of three. Yeah, because that's what I would do. Yeah. Like Fright Night is one of those yes, VHS totally. covers I remember. Yeah. Friday 13th, one of those VHS, Halloween, all these great classics. That just stands out to me immediately. And then this trailer just puts it together so nice mm -hmm. that I want to see this. Ethan Embry looks fantastic, man. Yeah. That's really rusty from Vegas Vacation. Dude. I can't believe this. He, I can't wait. He's great in this movie. He's very good. So good. Yeah. It's, uh, Why yeah. did it take so long for distribution? What's up with that? That's a good question. I mean, I don't know. I don't, you know, who knows the inner workings of a deal and, and right. costs. I'm and... trying to think of what premiered that year because I saw it when it premiered at TIFF, and I think almost everything else from the midnight lineup this that year had has already come out yeah i don't know i mean the, and, and look when i was at fantastic fest this was one of everyone's favorites yeah. so i mean it, it does it wasn't necessarily that you know people didn't like it and people were scared it was widely loved a tiff as well yeah but i do think ifc midnight is a great home for mm -hmm. it um so yeah we'll stay tuned it's coming in less than a month so excited nice. uh all right next up sharks, sharks. Hey. more sharks uh so 47 meters down has an international trailer and here is what you need to know no. The film stars Mandy Moore and Claire Holt as sisters vacationing in Mexico who become trapped at the bottom of the ocean with less than an hour of oxygen left and great whites circling nearby. It was originally set to be released on VOD last summer but was scooped up for a theatrical release only a few days before the launch. Thank you, The Shallows, for that because, guys, <laughs> that is exactly what happened. Uh, director, directed by The Other Side of the Door and future The Strangers 2 director Johannes Roberts uh, and finally great white sharks which are decreasing in numbers and rare uh, due to years of being hunted for fish and teeth are vital to the world's ecosystem and last night I virtually adopted one through the World Wildlife uh, Fund for Nature there you learned something today uh, I just felt like since we talk about scary sharks all the time they're not they are scary but they're also very important okay let's yeah. get back to the scary sharks uh. so this trailer I loved. I thought it was really good. Um, I noticed when I was looking at some of the comments on the trailer, they were there. They people were already finding factual issues with this situation, <laughs> like, oh, well, that's not how it actually work or whatever. So let's let's do willingness suspension of disbelief. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Mandy Moore. As, I'm not saying this to be funny. She is crushing on This Is Us. She is an incredible actress. Obviously, she had done some teen stuff prior, but I, I can't wait to see her in this. <laughs> Riley? Well, it's a shark movie. I'm <laughs> seeing this. Look, you know my... I, I, I have an absolute fascination with sharks. It started when I was very, very little. Obviously, you know I love Jaws. I love the simplicity of this. That they get trapped, and they have little, very little oxygen. Great white sharks. Roll camera, go. Those are the type of movies that I really enjoy. It's going to be all dependent on the director, how we get this now. Is it going to be scary? Is it going to be just kind of, yeah? But 
I, I've heard great things about Mandy Moore, which I'm surprised oh, yeah. about on, on what, This Is Us? This Is yeah, Us. Yeah, no, I, I, so, so much good, television to catch up on. No sharks in that, right? No so, sharks okay, and no Hanra. No Hanra on that one. No Hanra, no sharks. This is all real slice of life stuff. No, but these, the, these shark movies, it always taps into that primal fear I have that are sharks and that if you are in the water, you are the, the prey. You are the food. And that's what just scares the death out of me. So... I didn't like the trailer that much, though, to be honest with you. I thought because they didn't really show much. It was just kind of a lot of shadows, and I didn't think it was lit well. I couldn't really see. It Once was we got, very dark. Yeah, I it agree. was way too dark yeah. where I'm like, oh, okay. But like I said, the premise is there. You have a shark lover and me. Um, I'm going to now have to adopt one of these sharks <laughs> and name him Wedge or something. <laughs> shark I don't know. Riley. Yeah, name Shark one. Riley. <laughs> oh, Shark yeah. Riley. Yeah, yeah. Someone, on Done. Th- someone on Twitter <laughs> or Facebook said, Clark, are you going to name it Clark Wolf or Shark Wolf? Yeah, and Ooh, so, that's so, good. So I got to give props to whoever said that. Very clever. And so it works for you, too. Works for uh, me. Shark yeah. Riley. All right, I'm going like to adopt Riley two wolf. sharks. One's called Scrimbles. The other one's called Scrambles. <laughs> there it is. And, um, and maybe a third one would be called flavor i might just stack up the sharks but i'm not stacking up on this movie it looks stupid not boring and simplistic i you know i'd rather watch paint dry than watch <laughs> these two people for an hour try to figure out how to get an out hour of in 29 minutes yeah forget it well the 29 minutes is going to be all set up boring stuff of them like blah 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 and then they get in the tank and then they got an hour blah blah we know exactly how it's going to play out uh, there's no other characters in the movie is my guess so it's an hour of just watching one sister die and the other one try to scrimp out through like I wonder crawling which through one's gonna die. Caves. Yeah. It, I wonder who uh, yeah, that's gonna be anymore. <laughs> Honestly, it's just one of those it's like, look, I've seen a lot of different shark movies and I understand, you know, people who like the shark movies. Sure. I'm like the like, children shouldn't play, play with dead things. Don't go in the water with their sharks around because there's a probably especially if you're in a movie you might die. So I don't know. It's like, <laughs> to me it just feels like a played out kind of uh, story that I don't have zero interest in seeing. Fair. This looks stupid but the best kind of stupid. I can't wait to see this. And I think, the fa- I think the fact that this trailer came out and you also prefaced it by saying it was going to VOD, yep. that oh, makes yeah. me want to see it more. This is a stupid looking movie <laughs> that I can't wait to have fun with. The trailer actually, I think is pretty solid for what it is up to the midpoint where they get past that, at that basic premise, which is, it, it actually is very effective the way that they the way that they show it right. when they're dropping down and everything is getting darker. However, the second half of the trailer, it's like all I see is the writer and director being like, "What do we do with this concept totally. now? Let's just show a bunch of stuff they can't see and darkness Perry, and scary." Perry, can I just add? It's not VOD for me. It's VFF video for free. That's when I'm gonna see it. <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> well, no. I will say that. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. I, you know that I was not a huge fan of The Shallows. I, I but but I think that that was an expectations issue. Maybe I was expecting a bit more of a serious film, uh, and uh, that's not what we got. So. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe this one will will be good. Um, okay, so now we get to scream our favorite thing. What's, what's, in, the what's box? in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? Oh my god, you guys, what's in the box? <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, this is a really exciting one. This is a teaser as well. J.J. Abrams, Stephen King, Warner Brothers TV, and Hulu have teamed up for Castle Rock, a ten episode series taking place in the reoccur reoccurring fictional town featured in much of King's literature. So here's what you need to know. Fans can expect to see characters from famous King works like It, Cujo, Needful Things, A Shawshank Redemption, and uh, more. The show is being called Psychological Horror Series set in the Stephen King multiverse. I love that he has a multiverse. Uh, The series promises to be a reimagining that explores themes and worlds uniting the entire King canon while brushing up against his most iconic and beloved stories. Castle Rock is expected to debut on Hulu in 2017. And congratulations to Collider video friend and Fat Man on Batman co-host Mark Bernardin, who started this week as a member of the Castle Rock writing staff. Hey, hey. Right, Mark. Follow him on Twitter yeah. and uh, Instagram for more updates from Castle Rock. But yeah, this is this is very cool. I think this is very cool, guys. Oh my god! Very, very cool. Very. I, I had to. Okay. I, just, I retweeted okay. this <laughs> announcement video and I used all caps. That's nice. how excited I was, because this is like my type of show, 
and it's Stephen King. Look, Stephen King is the first one to do the shared universe. I'm sorry, you're yes. reading you're reading 112263, and you're getting a reference to an it character. You're it, it happens all the time in his books. I mean, obviously Castle Rock is where he sets everything, but right. those characters inhabit the same universe. So it's really great to see that we're gonna get. Pennywise showing up or Cujo showing up or Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot, one of the most underrated vampire books mm -hmm. out there. Go read this. Barlow is creepy. Can I retitle this? I should, I'm not calling it Castle Rock. I'm calling it Stranger Kings. Oh, Bam! Yeah. Yeah. What just oh. happened there, son? Bam! Well, New hashtag is what happened. That little yeah. teaser that they released had a very, you know, the Stranger Things Stranger. season two teaser where they played all the, the episode titles. That's kind of what it reminded me of. Yeah. But, Stranger oh, Kings. That's great. Stranger I can't Kings. believe I haven't seen that on Twitter yet. Get it trending. It's, Hashtag Stranger Kings, now. baby. Oh, I love so, it. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see this. I would love to see all of these different universes kind of go through one storyline and we could travel through all of them. And it's kind of been set up throughout, like you said, even when he was writing under the name of Bachman, all of his books now have kind of, all of his stories have kind of woven together. So mm -hmm. I can't wait to see how they do it. Right. I love this. No, it's it, like I said, I'm so watching this. It really... I was kind of asking for some clarification because I thought the teaser at first was like from the guy who brought you this and yeah. this and right. this. And I'm like, great, Castle Rock. I know that from all the books I've read for him. But then when you imagine that they're showing up, it like, could we see Annie Wilkes next to Pennywise? Ooh. I mean, that's what's doing it for me. I thought of uh, ABC's Once Upon a Time, like inhabiting the fairy tale characters that can all come together, but we're getting this horror totally. spin on it with J.J. Abrams, with Stephen King, who did a fantastic job on 112263 on Hulu. You gotta see that one. That was amazing, one of my favorite King books. So. Yeah, I, so here's a question for you guys, and it's funny because I think it's kind of similar to maybe what is happening on Once Upon a Time and maybe what's happening in the uh, DCEU. The idea, could, do you think that like with all the Stephen King properties that are being adapted for the big screen right now, that potentially we could have like two Pennywises running around? Yes, yeah. Do, do you really think Most so? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I actually hope it's that. And I, I assume you mean two Pennywises as in separate. The completely class. separate. Yeah. yeah. What, wait, wait, what? Not, not as in like, oh, there's a Pennywise not in the shared show universe and then, Pennywise, and then, but and two then separate Pennywise from, no, a Pennywise from the movie. on the movie yeah. and a Pennywise yeah. in the That's TV what I mean. show. Yeah. Different actors. yeah, that well that is the way to do it and I hope I, I'm assuming they're gonna keep it that way. This is such a freaking brilliant idea though how exciting is it that like this is how you take a really successful piece of material and adapt it you change it but you still benefit from the familiar name and the places and like, going back to what riley said before as i was watching the teaser because i watched the teaser before i read anything about the story and you know i'm taking my little notes and i'm like all right, this is cool, but do we really need it? And then, and then I get to the end, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I see what you're doing here. Yeah. I mean, really, how cool is it that we're about to get an original, uh, an original Hulu thriller that I think the word they used was was brush brushing up against some of the most iconic and beloved stories. That's a smart way to approach something like this. I think this has so much freaking potential. I I can't freaking wait. Is it coming out in October as well, like everything else is? I, I, yeah, we don't know, but probably. Yeah, that'd be I, awesome. I don't know. It might be. Is it? Would that be too soon? They, I think. Um, I think in the uh, in the original article, it said it's going into production. Yeah, it hasn't. They haven't started physical production yet. Um, that's a good. Actually, that's a good. Well, Produ no, production is set to begin this year. TV. TV it has we, a faster it, turnaround. Exactly, yeah. and also, uh, yeah. I mean, it's only February, so I think that's uh, plenty of time if they want wanted to make an October release, which we don't know. They haven't announced that. What characters would you like to see in here? Because mine uh, is Annie Wilkes. Nice. Yeah. I yeah. want to see Annie Wilkes from Misery. Uh, and you know what I was just thinking? Like, what if one of the characters in this town sort of like ran into Annie at the at the hardware store or something mm. and we the audience know sh when she walks out oh. that door where she's going oh, she's buying a cobbling it, like yes. uh, what are you uh, buying yeah, a sledgehammer right. like I just feel like the potential for us to fill in the blanks is so cool you know who I want to say I want to see Barlow from S Salem's Lot mm -hmm. the original Nosferatu and then I also want to see the actual lawnmower man from the short yes, story. Yes. The creepy, weird, cloven hoofed, weirdo dude eating grass that scared me when I was a little kid. When I read that short story, it scared the crap <laughs> out of me. Has nothing to do with graphics or VR. It's messed up. Read that short. Yes. Everything you guys said and Danny.
from The Shining. Yes. Right, that was in the list. That it was, was in the it teaser. Was in the, and how interesting would that be? And, well, he's we know he's grown up and he's in Doctor Sleep, which mm-hmm. I have on my bookshelf and haven't read yet. But we know Danny, yeah. Stephen King, has still uh, had a lot of ideas for mm. Danny Torrance, which is kind of awesome. Yeah, I love all those. I mean, I'm going to throw Pennywise in there. But a little known character that I love is from the dark half, Thad Beaumont. Mm. He He's kind of like um, Stephen King in a way he writes under a pseudonym and then he and when they find out he's like he does like kind of a burial for him he's like okay you know i'm gonna i'm gonna retire the character but that character then comes to life and terrifies terrifies his family this is a great book that it's it was made into i think an awful movie yeah. like, timothy hutton timothy hutton's yeah. movie it wasn't it didn't capture that but i that that'd be interesting to see him brush against you know annie wilkes or even sure. um Andy Dufresne. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be really fun to see. So I'm so excited for this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this week's jump scare. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, what no. was that? Scary. Uh, okay. So <laughs> this week on Radio Play Theater. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome. Uh, okay, so prompted by a tweet from Marco Polo Torres on Twitter, and by the way, hola to our friends in Mexico. Uh, he asked us what we thought about David F. Sandberg directing Shazam for the WB. So. This past week, it was announced that David F. Sandberg is in talks to direct a Shazam movie for Warner Brothers. Um, And Cloverfield and Planet of the Apes director Matt Reeves was also in talks. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that that's not going to happen to direct uh, the Batman. James Wan is currently shooting Aquaman. And don't forget, and I've got a list here. So don't forget uh, Sinister and Deliver Us from Evil director Scott Derrickson Mm -hmm. recently took on Doctor Strange. Joss Whedon, who created Buffy the Vampire Slayer and co-wrote Cabin in the Woods was very involved, obviously, with Phase 1 of Marvel and directed both of the Avengers movies. Speaking of Cabin in the Woods and Buffy, Drew Goddard is show-running Daredevil for Marvel. Uh, Sam Raimi had Spider-Man, Tim Burton had Batman, Richard Donner directed The Omen two years before Superman the movie. Mm -hmm. So this is a big list. It's gone on for decades. Genre, genre filmmakers (laughs) uh, coming into superheroes. And, uh, you know, the fact that Sandberg, by the way, who had made... Gosh, I mean, one teeny tiny movie, Annabelle 2, which we haven't seen anything from, but something tells me that if the WB was going to offer him Shazam, that's a pretty big endorsement of Annabelle too. Right. Yeah. Uh, what big do you time. guys think? Annabelle turns into a giant muscular. She's like, Annabelle. <laughs> yeah. Like lightning. Uh-huh. Chair no, universe. I thought Lights Out was so fantastic, and I remember the year or so before watching that short that he'd made with his wife. It scared the piss out of me. Just that like click click, and then the weird shadowy thing is like ever. It's like the kind of thing you imagine when you're like looking down a hallway, and if you see something out of the corner of your eye. I think he captured that, and then making Lights Out was its just its own really fun 90 minutes fright freaky spook fest where you know screaming at the you know in the theater don't do that yeah. you know that can it was a perfect audience film and uh, that and don't breathe are my two favorite horror films from last year mm. so to see that he's going to get a shot at Shazam it's great that means he must have come at them with a script or a, like an idea and they don't just be like yeah get that horror guy it's like they have to have meetings and he probably presented them with uh, his unique take on the property where they're like well that kind of jives with what we're trying to do and obviously you know the rock is black adam they split it into two movies i think it's great and obviously the list that you went off on it shows that they're looking that that horror is a great place for creatives to go to because Horror allows you to, number one, do a really cool creative story within the the budget constraints that horror usually has, which is low budget, which usually forces you to become more creative. So that really shines through when you get great horror directors. I think studios can see that and be like, that person will do great with our, you know, our creative vision, whether it's a superhero film or an action movie. You can just look at the beginnings all the way down from Roger Corman. You had Mm -hmm. all these people who started out doing Corman horror films and moved on. Francis Ford Coppola. The list is endless. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. And I think that a lot of people with horror, you have to jump in what you're saying with the budget. That's absolutely true. And you have to take that and create a visual template that is going to scare you, that is going to pop off the screen with very little that sometimes if you don't have a lot of money for gore or if you don't have a lot of money for CGI stuff, you have to 
know your stuff as a director to create these visual scenes that like I I'm talking about the void trailer. I mean, uh, I keep mm -hmm. that flash of a skull yeah. like is sticking with me and then the shooting out of this creature thing, right? So those those are shots that you could say are very similar to a comic book panel. So if these guys are cutting their teeth in a horror movie, you know, it's visual storytelling and we're we're getting a comic book movie that is visual based on a visual medium in comic books so it it's such an easy transition to make not easy i know that there's a lot of skill a lot of talent to it but but you that's the best resume you have is like look at what i did especially lights out look at what i did for 5 minutes i scared the crap out of you and you can't even turn off the lights because that click click and then that was visually powerful. And then to see Lights Out again, a great horror movie. It makes complete sense this is happening. It's gonna continue to happen far down the line. Warner Brothers uh, isn't letting him go. You're not on board? I, I don't know. I'm I'm having a very hard time lately just being fully excited for anything going on in the DCEU, given right. sure. their current situation. And there is nothing I want more than for them to make a great installment of whatever movie they're working on. I, I want all the best for those filmmakers in that franchise. I want it to work so, so badly. But there's just so many red flags. We talked a, a little bit about this when we were talking on Movie Talk about Mel Gibson potentially directing Suicide Squad 2 and part of the reason that I'm excited about that is because I envision Mel Gibson as a director that no studio and no suit can push around and as a new filmmaker who first hit the scene with a low budget really you know fantastic film I'm a little nervous for David F. Sandberg and especially because he's you know he is already maybe he played ball with them on Annabelle 2 for all I know maybe and I, I don't like looking on the negative side ever for all I know Annabelle 2 could be incredible, could blow that first movie away, which I didn't really like. And he could finally do, you know, Annabelle the character justice. But I, I don't know. There's too many red flags at this point for me to think this is this is a good thing for him as a director building a career. I'll argue that, but go ahead. Yeah, well, I was going to argue it too. Maybe we're on the same team. And we're surrounding you, Perry. Right. So ready, get ready. Perry. I'll judge. Uh, no, no, yeah. And Marley's going <laughs> to judge. <laughs> uh, no, what I was going to say is I, I think that that's a good argument. However, um, Sandberg has already been working with the WB. Those have been his two feature films. And much like James Wan, who had been mm -hmm. in the WB family already, he already has a working relationship. When I think of somebody like Matt Reeves, who is coming from working with Fox on his last handful of films, he doesn't have that pre-existing relationship with the studio. Now, I don't know what the relationship is. I'm just saying that Clearly, for, for James Wan to have stuck around the WB and made a handful of movies right. with them, they work well together. And it sounds like same with Samberg. It's a, it's a very fair point to make. Then again, when you look at someone like James Wan, who made a Fast and Furious film, I mean, da David Samberg, he's got Annabelle 2. He has Lights Out, which was an itty-bitty feature film. And you can also compare him to, uh, to Scott Derrickson, because that's another name that everybody's bringing up. Before Scott Derrickson did Doctor Strange, he directed yeah. The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which cost $19 million, the production budget I'm talking about, The Day the Earth Stood Still, with an $80 million production budget, then there was Sinister, Itty Bitty, and then Deliver Us from Evil, a $30 million yeah. production budget film. This is a, a very different situation to me. And when you up the budget to that extent and when you have the pressure of putting yourself in the middle of a super highly anticipated superhero film franchise, there's new pieces to the filmmaking puzzle that come into play and there's just so much pressure. I, I wish he would... I wish this news would have dropped after Annabelle 2, because for all I know, Annabelle 2 will wow me, and then I will have some renewed confidence in the situation. At the moment, having just seen Lights Out, Lights Out is an excellent film. There is nothing necessarily in Lights Out that specifically says to me, he is the person to direct Shazam above all else. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's look at two words, James Wan. He's like... Not only did he hire him to make lights out from seeing his short film, but then he hired him to take on one of his characters, Annabelle, to, to do a, a, a sequel to a film that wasn't well received. <laughs> and now everyone's talking. I actually read an interview that David F. Um, Sandberg did like a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks ago. I read it yesterday. Uh, sounds like a really intelligent guy, funny, uh, lighthearted, awesome. just like a, just a cool dude 
who's got his shit up, you know, set up. So it's like, I don't think he's going to be pushed around. And on top of that, he's like, no, Annabelle 2 was always going to be a hard R. It was written and made as an R-rated film. The least it could be as an R is what he was saying. So mm -hmm. that he can go from one play box to the other sandbox, mm -hmm. that's that kind of flexibility that a lot of people have. And I feel like, look, it's like, if you're making a Subaru film, I'd rather have somebody who can actually have that kind of flexibility because, we, you know, Shazam is like a lighter hearted. It's not a grin. It's not mm -hmm. going to be some Batman version of Shazam. It's Billy Batson and like a little kid who turns into a Subaru. It's going to be lighthearted. I'd rather see someone who can have that kind of flexibility. I, I most certainly, I, I hope you're right. I really do want all the best for everybody involved in this until I see another feature film from this first time feature filmmaker. Mm. I don't know if I could be completely positive about the scenario. There, there's one more thing that I wanted to add and it's real quick is just that I think WB looked at what happened with James. James walked away from the WB to make the Fast and Fast or Furious 7. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they probably regretted letting him go. Uh, and and so, you know, he came back to the WB and now I, you know, obviously does a lot of work with them, but I'm just saying perhaps this is a situation of the WB going, we don't want you know, our next James Wan's first action big budget feature to be with another studio. We want to keep him in the house, so let's go ahead and entertain this Well, idea. James Wan's doing Aquaman, I'm sure. They're going right. to, like, you know, maybe Shazam will be an Aquaman. Who the hell Who knows? knows? Riley, any last thoughts before we go to Twitter questions? No, I mean, I, I said my piece. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a totally separate conversation about the DC stuff. And, yeah, that and is. And that, like, to, like, I hope... I. I Echo what you're saying, Perry. Absolutely. I hope he gets the wide canvas to do what he wants. And I think he's got some, and then see your guys' point, James Wan is there to maybe offer some assistance or some guidance. But, um, and I like your point too, Clark, that uh, they're going to keep him in there. Maybe Annabelle 2 just knocks our socks off. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and Shazam could be something. I feel like so, you're gearing up to deliver a ruling or something. And I am. <laughs> if I had a bell, ding, point yeah, for Schnepp and Clark. Right, Sorry, right. Perry. Yeah. Ding, point no, for really? Shep and Clark. I, I really do deeply hope that that's the way this goes. All right. Yeah. Well, well I'm, sure, I'm sure this will be a conversation that will continue <laughs> yeah. for to months. To be <laughs> Exactly. All right. So let's get into some Twitter questions. I'm under the impression that our, we are not live for you right now anymore but that's okay we're gonna take your Twitter questions live anyway um, and I actually found one that I wanted to start with because a couple of you guys reached out and I wanted to talk about this specifically so Luke uh, at Luke underscore Jagger said what did you guys see the teaser for the Tales from the Crypt what did you think love the show first of all thank you yeah. um, okay so I wanted to address this why I did not put it in this week's show this is not official Mm. Um, and I watched both things. Uh, the, t the actual scripted teaser was awesome. Uh, it was very, very cool. However, since that, and I'm going to take that one first, since that wasn't released by TNT, you know, internally for networks um, and, and studios, they make stuff like this all the time. Stuff that audiences are never supposed to see, which brings me to uh, the M. Night Shyamalan little docu-style right. clip where he was talking about why I love this and that. So the thing that tipped me off that that was not meant for the public eyes was the shot in which there are bats flying in the sky. That is the <coughs> opening shot from Penny Dreadful. That's mm. from the opening credits of Penny Dreadful. Now, what happens is a lot of times directors and editors are hired to cut together sample pieces for networks and studios. It's saying, called a sizzle reel. It is. Yep. Thank you very much, John Schnepp. And you, I'm sure, can speak to this much more than me. But so while that stuff is cool and I really enjoyed listening to what Knight had to say, when I saw that Penny Dreadful clip, I was like, yeah, this isn't real. This is a sizzle that someone, and by the way, I believe when it was up on Vimeo, it was from a post house, like it was an editor's <clears throat> account. So mm. that's why I didn't put it up there. But in terms of content, the scripted uh, tease with the guy banging his mm. head was it ruled. That was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. Anybody else have anything they want to add? I'll, I'll Pulled down it. before I could watch it. Uh, and oh. the, the dot com disclaimer is this video was an old teaser made almost a year ago for internal review. There you go. Internal purposes. I had no idea because I think, uh, I don't know if you sent it out or it was like just, I was like scrimping around online. And I found it. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, I was like, so I watched the little head bangy one. Yeah. And from the little thumbnail, I was like, I was like, eh, this is probably going to suck. That's just me, a prejudging asshole. But <laughs> I, then I watched it, and I was like, whoa, I really loved it. Yeah. 
And then I watched the thing that I guess the, no one was supposed to see, and I was like, oh, I was 100% in. They should release that and just replace the footage that they don't own because mm -hmm. I love seeing M. Night talk about his love for Tales from the Crypt. And, yeah, I haven't loved all of M. Night's films, but he has a, he's a great director. When the films are great, they're great. And to see his love and talking about Tales from the Crypt and the Crypt Keeper will be in there and some will be short, like little shorts. Some will be half hour. Some will be like mm -hmm. presents the like a two block. hour yeah. the horror block. That's fantastic. And that's so cool, especially for all of us horror fans to have someone like M. Night, like heralding this yep. and like helming it and like making that happen for all of us. I just felt that love. And I was like, wow, there's no one better than this guy to take this on. So it, it filled me with so much excitement that they should release it to the public. They shouldn't be afraid. It's like, man, that's a sales well, tool yeah. for the public. The other thing, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, Riley, but no, the other fine. thing is that um, they don't own the rights to the Crypt Keeper as he, from the HBO. And so right. that was it. So I, so much of the discussion that night was, or what he was saying was, yes, we'll have the Crypt Keeper and it's gonna be awesome. And this is what the Crypt Keeper does. Well, you can't cut to the HBO version of the Crypt Keeper. Right. Um, and that, so that's another another tell as to why you can see that this was internal. They should hire Ted Raimi because remember we, yes. we talked yes. about he was the Crypt Keeper in some pilot that you'll never see, but Ted Raimi's awesome. So get him involved. He is awesome. Riley, any thoughts? No, I just love this. I did <laughs> echo all what you guys said. That, that sizzle reel with M. Night talking just what stuck out for me is like you're going to spend a night with us and yeah, I, I just totally. love that it's like it's like an event you're going to sit down there you don't know what you're going to get and um, all the images all the sizzle reel that they did create is a great sales tool um, I, I didn't know that about the Crypt Keeper though that it, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense so we're going to get a whole new version of a yep. Crypt Keeper which I can't wait right. to see what that is through M Nights. I'm jealous head. you guys all saw this. Yeah. Well, it's I bet we could find it. We'll we'll I'm sit sure. down afterwards and <laughs> yeah. see what we I'm can do. I'm glad though you brought up the other thing that was exciting is yeah, the night it's a whole night. Yeah. yeah. So it's like that's it's what's exciting. Kind of like makes Monster me feel like a little Vision. kid. Do you remember yeah. TNT did this when yes. I was a kid? Yeah. Yeah. Monster Vision. It was totally. every Saturday night. And that's where I saw the ice cream man with Clint Howard for the first time. <laughs> and for nice. myself it was Chiller Theater. Chiller <laughs> Theater with a weird like claymation six-fingered hand let's bring that back uh, mm, deal nice. all right um riley do you have any fun questions yeah i got one here because i'm selfish and want to talk about is it Halloween. about jaws is it, oh <laughs> no, no i was gonna no, guess no. jaws or meg yeah it's either jaws or friday 13th in my <laughs> head no this is interesting because it's something that we're so we're we we know that halloween is going to be a sequel so scott <sighs> monroe should new halloween start off at haddonfield hospital and use alternate ending of Lori in the ambulance from Halloween 2. Mm. I love that. So, Clark, great question. Right? That's an I, I saw it on Twitter too. I'm really glad you picked that yeah. one. Um that's a good idea and that's a big question that we're going to have to answer. The I think too the idea of you guys have asked this. We've all been wondering it is Lori Strode going to show up in David Gordon Green and uh and Danny McBride's Halloween. That's a great and question. We, you know, it, we know that it picks up after Halloween 2, but we don't don't know if that's the next day or right. we don't know or if that's, we don't know if it's mm. 2018 exactly. because i would prefer it to be 2018 and it's jamie lee curtis she's still alive and her head gets cut off in the first two minutes <laughs> oh. bam you're watching halloween wait, now, no, now wait a minute i think that happened didn't that happen already? In yeah. resurrection, she, she was, already get killed. She was killed off by Michael uh, Myers in no, resurrection. That doesn't count. Doesn't this, count anymore. Right. Exactly. This is, a, this is the They're third one. Which right. also is yes. sad because we don't get then H two O happening. H two O is right? fun. I, I like H two O. I like H two O. Well, I, that's why I mean. Yeah. I like yeah. it. But if we're talking canon now. Well, oh my maybe, God! We have canon conversation. Jamie Lee in Curtis is in multiple dimensional yes. Halloween, Perfect. so you Jamie know, these Lee, are like time continuum. This is exactly what's going to happen in the new Halloween movie. We're going to have alternate timelines and everything. Yeah, right? I love it. Right? And that then Pennywise sense. is going to show up, yeah. and it's all at Castle Rock. Deal. Whoa, really? Up. If if it's an idea that I can come up with on my own right now, I don't want to see it in their movie. I want mm. them to surprise me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think you just. I mean, look, they kind of already did this kind of jumping off in Halloween 4 Return of Michael Myers because it then picks up years later and you realize he's been in a coma for ever since the explosion at the hospital after part two. So I want something fresh and exciting and I don't even know what's going on. So Fair enough. All yeah. right. Do we have any other good questions that you like, Riley? Oh, yeah. I got a bunch oh, here. Oh, boy. You guys got them all in before that stream died. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, Frankie Segura at Frankie Segura 24 saw the 90s remake of Night of the Living Dead and found slow zombies a lot creepier. 
Do you prefer zombies fast or slow? Mm. I love well, these. The uh, 1990s remake was directed by Tom Savini, mm -hmm. uh, right? M Master Gore Master, and actually, it's an incredible film. I think he's gotten the short. He's been shorted from getting great credit for like taking George Romero's vision, redoing it in his own way. It's a great film. Night of the Living Dead, the color version is incredible. They remade it just because it was a black and white. They redid it for color just because people are like, I don't want to watch a black and white movie. <laughs> well, whatever. Now you have a color one. Tony Todd. It's awesome. Tony Todd. Yep. And uh, boy, if you haven't seen it, definitely check out Night of the Living Dead by Tom Savini. But yeah, slow zombies, fast zombies. I love all zombies. Uh, fast zombies scare the crap out of me. Yeah. I mean, that's the like the rage virus or however yeah. you want it. The Dawn of the Dead, the Zack Snyder version. Those zombies are they're fast, right? Yes. Yeah, because they oh, run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that was one of my favorite parts Opening of Dawn scene. of the Dead. When that zombie starts oh booking, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. 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 Freaked me out, and I love it. But it's all in the storytelling. I love The Walking Dead so, so much. I know people don't like Walking Dead anymore, but they've just figured out new ways. Those zombies are slow, um, but they can hurt up, and there are things that, you, like, you can be caught somewhere, and so that element is there that but heavy the metal zombie from the last episode Ooh, yeah. come on Dude, that, was, that is yeah. right out of like I a cool it. album cover that man. was straight up iron maiden right yes, there it was. um but yeah i could go either way it's all the, dependent on the storytelling fast zombies definitely freak me out more just because i feel like if i was ever in a zombie apocalypse the one thing i'd have going for me is that i can run i yeah. learned that from zombie land that's one of the rules you gotta you know train up and know how to run at the, at the same time, like, how sad is it if there's slow zombies that, that, and you get bit? <laughs> so, come on. Can I tell you, when I was a little kid, I was a scaredy cat, as most of you know, and our house was at the top of a, of a hill and, uh, and looked down, like, onto the street and the cul-de-sac, and uh, I would peek out. It was after I saw this version of Night of the Living Dead when I was, like, six, and my cousin and my brother were like, this is awesome. And they were My brother's younger than me, too, <laughs> but I was too scared, and I peeked out and I will never forget thinking what if zombies just walked right and it's like that shot of Night of the Living Dead where they're all just like <laughs> descending on and five-year-old Clark was just horrified and I do think like that's that image is just like what if it was in your house it was coming up to your house and where would you go it's scary. Love let that. me differentiate i love slow zombies i love fast zombies world war Zo z zombies i could do without the the like we could climb all over zombies. each other we're a tornado like, zombies. i will yeah. say yeah. though zombies, the boring. idea of any kind of zombie on an airplane oh, that's yes. airborne <laughs> yes. that's a great sequence Total. great 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 all right yeah. riley what else we got i uh, love this one uh eric uh right eric barbour at E.J. Barb's, uh, what director, Barb. living or not, Barb, created <laughs> most terrifying, creepy atmosphere with imagery, design, music, suspense. Ooh. Just, uh, I mean, yeah, this atmosphere. is going to be a long, yeah, like very atmospheric, design, music, suspense. I got mine, so. Yeah, well, I think Carpenter I got one, too. Carpenter is easily mm -hmm. one of the ones, because he's made so many films, as well as directing and doing the musical score. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go right in. Nightmare on Elm Street, the original, oh, Wes yeah. Craven, blew sure. my mind. That very first scene, you got a goat, you got Tina running in the darkness of a boiler room, that goat runs out. Um, then, you, then you think about the music. Not a lot of people give that Nightmare on Elm Street uh, oh, yeah. theme Super a creepy. go. It is so creepy. I know oh, you yeah. get the one, two, Freddy's coming right. for you, which is on its own creepy. That music is so amazing. And then you hear that weird music when Freddy comes out and even in the behind the scenes stuff when they're like, we didn't know if those arms were gonna look good. Right. But when you see that and the way that Wes Craven shot it, it just stands out. Nightmare on Elm Street was something that stuck with me as a kid because you see Freddy making his glove and then you see the nightmares. Mm. And it's just something that all across the board, atmosphere, creepy, terrifying, music, imagery, design, suspense, all of that, it was Wes Craven. I wasn't listening because I was just thinking, Barb, this question is about <laughs> scores and like elevating a movie. All right, no, ding, it's Perry. No, it's like it's directors. Like, and, what directors yeah. really, yeah. An atmosphere. To create an, an atmosphere. atmosphere that really takes you I'll throw you another in. one in there, David Cronenberg. And Where do working I get with scores from? And working with <laughs> Howard Shore, who mm -hmm. did most of David Cronenberg's you know, epic, you know, the fly, you've got Videodrome. Those guys work together and created a kind of a, you know, the, David Cronenberg's uh, atmosphere of any of his movies automatically has like a creep factor, especially when it, with his horror films. Yeah. One of the most atmospheric films I've seen recently is probably The Babadook. Mm -hmm. It's got a right? very a very specific style that I think 
I've really only seen in that kind of movie that really suits that kind of uh, that kind of fairy tale like story. So I'd I'd probably say that and and the witch actually if I'm thinking about Great super choice. atmospheric yeah. more recent films. I mean the the atmosphere in that field and how it transitions into the woods mm. that that is a mortifying situation. Yeah, the the witch I think is one of the most atmospheric films I've seen in the last ten years. But I will say even though I hate the movie and I do hate it, uh, only lovers left alive. That mm. atm- I felt like I was in that house with them, mm. like trapped in that house. Detroit is like crumbling right. around them, and music is obviously such a big part of this. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, for better or for worse, felt like I was Wait there. Wait a sec, Clark. Were you talking about one of the greatest vampire movies ever made, what? Only Lovers uh, Left Alive? Here we go. That's our next debate. That. That's our next debate segment. Hmm. Ding. No, for uh-huh. snap. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I right. It. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I think that about does it for Aww. us today. This was so fun, and thank you guys for sending your Twitter questions. We always love those uh, using the hashtag Collider Nightmare. So, Perry, where can the people find you? You guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P right here on Collider Nightmares, and behind the scenes every Saturday. Oh, surprise, surprise. Got another good one coming your way this weekend, so check it out. And Mr. John Schnepp. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Buy my Slayer comic book. The second issue comes out in about two weeks. It's even gorier and more bloody than the first issue. Thanks for coming by Long Beach Comic Con and saying hello, and I'll see you guys very soon. And Mr. Mark Riley. At Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, Schmo's No Main Show tonight, 7 p.m. And what else we got? And Nightmares, of course. See you then. And one more plug. We also just uploaded our Get Out non-spoiler review, so you're going to want to check that out as well. Cool. All right. And you can find me at Clark Wolf, Clark with an E, Wolf with an E. Uh, Thank you guys for sharing the show, supporting the show, getting the word out there. You guys have been awesome on all forms of social media, and we love you for it. So that'll do it for us today. And until next time, we will see you in your nightmares. (laughs) Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.